Is there more to entertainment than 500 channel TV and zillion dollar movies? Turning the sound up and your mind off? Is there still a place where fun involves thinking, imagining, doing? Some of us think so, and we find it in a game. Magic the Gathering. All you need to play is a brain, a deck, and a friend. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Receivables Portal Edition. I'm your host, Cedric Phillips, at Cedric A. Phillips on everything. I'm joined by Patrick Sullivan, at Basic Mountain on Twitter. Now, Patrick, we've covered core sets. Mm -hmm. We've covered Magic's first set, Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited. We've covered some pretty bad expansions. Sure. But we've never covered a set made to introduce players to the game. It's a pretty fascinating experiment. Yeah. Because obviously Portal is about, well, we got to teach new players the game. We do. And we're going to kind of go through the strengths and weaknesses of the particular execution and, and some of the challenges of doing that sort of thing in the first place. But Magic is really not that old in the scheme of things when this set comes out. We're talking about three years old. Okay. Okay. So think about it. When you're making alpha and it's like, well, how are we going to teach, teach new players? The answer would be, what are you talking about? Everyone's new. Okay. This sure. is the game. Yeah. Okay. So moving forward three years and saying, what are the parts of the game that are too complicated? Mm -hmm. What are the parts of the game that we could simplify? What are the parts of the game, maybe card types that don't really pull their weight? It's an interesting pulling back and sort of retrospective because the game starts from a position of being for new players. It's a new game. True. And then moving ahead of time and trying to analyze, okay, well, how can we strip down the experience while keeping the fun such that new players can learn the game a bit more easily? So what you're saying is, is feel, it feels like what you're saying is that the pocket player's guide was not effective. Turns out asking people to read a 80 page document some of the rules are not even expressed correctly mm -hmm. multiple sections on anti which no one wants to play true uh, it's not effective okay at teaching new players well perhaps this booster pack will be we'll be getting to this a little bit later in the show but for now we are going to start this episode as we start all episodes with the facts of portal All right, everybody, we are here for the facts of Portal. But before we start there, we, of course, have to start with our wonderful sponsor, Tales of Adventure. Thank you, as always, to our sponsor, Tales of Adventure. You can find their website at toamagic.com. And if you're on Twitter, make sure to be following the store owner at TOA Michael. That's Michael Caffrey. That's his account for the, for the shop. And often inventory, sales, Deals get posted there that you can't find on the website. Tales of Adventure is your one-stop shop for sealed products, supplies, and individual cards. Buy, sell, and trade. I'm speaking from personal experience. This past weekend, I traded with Michael directly for a Beta Mox Ruby. Extremely happy with that experience. Speaking of their high end, all of their individual cards there are scanned, so you can find the card and the price and condition that works best for you. All orders placed inside the United States come with free shipping and tracking. And most importantly, make sure to be using promo code RESLEAVABLES at checkout for 8% off of all orders. Tales of Adventure, Eternal lives here. All right, let's do it to it. Portal, it was released on May 1st, 1997, and it was advertised as a beginner version of Magic. We are going to learn the positives and negatives of that in just a moment. But first, let's go over who designed this bad boy. It was designed by Bill Rose. He was the lead alongside Dan Cervelli, Joel Mick, Mark Elliott, and Mark Rosewater. Portal was developed by Bill Rose as well. He was the lead there again. Dan Cervelli, Joel Mick, William Jokic, Mark Rosewater, Henry Stern, and Jonathan Tweet. And the art direction, if you've, if you've been watching our show for a little bit, this name will be familiar, is done once again by Sue Ann Harkey. So we'll get the designers and developers out of the way because uh, there's some kind of some interesting things going on with this set. Now, firstly... White border, black border, what's it going to be? You would think it'd be white border. You'd be wrong. It's 215 black border cards. Not really sure why they made the decision to have this be black border. Maybe just because it's cooler, but they did. 
55 rares, 55 uncommons, uh, 55 hot dogs, 55 fries, 55, uh, 85 commons, and 20 basic lands. Uh, that's the set, 215 cards, not really that many. It's so interesting, the thing with the borders coming up again, mm -hmm. because if any set that we've done so far justifies, what if we had a silver border? It's yeah, like it could be the this introductory set. product that's not legal for tournaments at the time. Yeah, perfect. It's actually again the most confusing execution to use one of the two pre-existing frames for a set that is not tournament legal. Yeah, are these legal? No. Okay. Uh, Portal is Wizards' first major attempt at creating a set for new players. So you may have thought that like fourth edition, fifth edition, you like those were trying to be those core sets new player friendly, but this is like the real like. All right, let's get some new people in the door. Here's how to play the game. It was designed to provide them a format with simpler rules than a core set or an expansion set. So it had no instants, no enchantments, no artifacts, and some sorceries that could be played outside the normal timing rules for sorceries. Why is that complicated? Which makes them instants. So, well, sometimes. Sort of. Because you can't play them at all times. That's true. They call out discrete windows. Okay, these cards received an errata. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over the list real quick. White has Blessed Reversal, Defiant Stand, and Harsh Justice. Blue, Command of Unsummoning and Mystic Denial. Black, Assassin's Blade. Red, Scorching Winds. Green, Deep Wood, Treetop Defense. Okay, go ahead. I think Portal has a top-level problem that is basically not solvable no matter what the execution is. Okay. And this is a reason to really not do these sort of products. Okay. Is it assumes that someone can walk into the shop and the store definitely has it in stock. Okay. So like the actual portal product. Right. Exactly. Okay. How do you make sure that new players are even getting this experience? You are limited by stores having it. And then people who work there being able to direct new players that the product is for them. Okay. That, 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 problem cannot be solved you can say it's worth the cost but just keep in mind that there's a reason that if you're going to do these sort of products or tutorials it makes a lot more sense to do them on digital clients you can think of the tutorial in arena as something of a portal experience yeah sure and okay. why that works is you can make sure that people have to go through it before they get into the primary client okay that is effective at teaching people the rules whereas the, the the way the stars have to align for a new player to walk in and then they buy portal and then they're able to learn from it. It just, it's likely to fail in most instances. Okay. Okay. Then there are two problems at a top level with this product. That's supposed to be teaching people how to play the game. Okay. One is it doesn't teach them the rules. Yeah, not really. And the second is you give them a bunch of cards. They can't play with, with anyone else. Yeah. Cause they're not legal. So yeah, sure. I would believe there is a way to execute this Okay, where you are teaching people the core rules of the game and you are using your discretion about how complicated we want individual things to be. And we can get into that, I think, when we're talking about the instance that or sorceries that can be played in a particular window versus instance that you could have selected. Yeah. And then talk about delegitimizing the experience. When your cards, you play against someone at the shop that has been playing for a year and they go, oh, those aren't even real cards. You're not allowed to play with those. Yeah. So yeah. you're not teaching them the rules. You're giving them cards they can't play with. The whole experience, once you engage with an experienced player, actually makes you feel delegitimized. It's not that you learn something. It's they gave you this training wheels experience that isn't what the game actually is. Yep. That speaks to the actual execution and where I think parts of this are deeply flawed, but at a top level, the opportunity cost of, well, how do we make sure people even get the cards in the first place? Even if this is appropriate for them, that is something that really can't be solved except once you move to a digital client like magic arena, where you can force people through the pipeline of the tutorial experience. Yeah, they have to start with the tutorial. They magic can't arena. skip it. There's no option. You can, you can, it's tough. Okay. I, I only I only correct you because every time I download Magic Arena again, like on like a new computer or something, or or like make a new account, you have to it's not easy to skip the tutorial. Yeah, I could it's a little cumbersome. I couldn't figure out a way to do it. And frankly, I was having enough fun getting my dubs that I wasn't really gonna try. Okay. But it was, you know, a little bit simple for me. And 
if I could have figured out how to skip it, I think I would have. Okay. Uh, speaking of these sorceries that aren't instants but can be played in instance, I'm going to highlight Blessed Reversal real quick. So Blessed Reversal is one in a white. Mm-hmm. It's a sorcery. Play Blessed Reversal only after you're attacked before you declare interceptors. There's a lot going on there. Interceptors, probably most notably. And then for each attacking creature, you gain three life. Yeah, that's not a sorcery at all. Right? Right. Like, it's never played as a sorcery. Correct. Yeah, except for it has type line sorcery. So, I mean, I don't understand how you get here when well, you're designing and developing the set. This is the big thing for me. It's like, I literally don't know how you, how whoever's like developing it or testing the cards just, just doesn't go, why isn't this just an instant? I think the reason is for this style of execution, if I had to guess, would be what's complicated about magic is not so much instants. Those are actually pretty straightforward. And in a lot of cases, mirror the way that people think that all the cards should work which is a just play them wherever. Sure. Sorcery is actually the more complicated card type in practice. Okay. Because it means on my main phase while the stack is empty and I have priority. It's actually pretty rulesy compared to instant. Okay. My guess would be the concern is not instance, it's the stack. Teaching people the stack. Okay. And once you're in the world where instants have a window where they can be played, like this one, for example, you never get into the issue of the stack. Because you're basically playing it as a sorcery, just in a different priority window. Okay. I don't know if that's better than saying, yeah, we're going to put shock and giant growth in here. And it's too fundamental to the game engine. And frankly, where a lot of the fun comes from, for people to see the way that shock and giant growth interact with one another in different spots. That's where a lot of the fun stimulating gameplay comes from. So let's try making instants, but make them really simple. So that way we're putting the pressure on, yeah, you kind of have to learn how the stack works. That's too fundamental to the game, but we're not going to give you really complicated stacks or openings. We're just going to make the cards as simple as possible while guiding you along. This is a very different ideology, which is trying to avoid the stack at all costs while giving people the instant experience in some windows. Okay. Uh, the other note here, as far as design and development is concerned, uh, creatures featured no creature types. Their type line just reads summon creature. Now, naturally, these cards got eroded. I had imagined in the uh, the great, what I don't know what we call it, the great errata thing. Thing of a bomber yeah. that we hate thing. Well, this one I actually don't mind. Oh, the, the, this one makes total sense. Right, because yeah. it's not it's not the we're eroding this knight into a soldier type of thing. Yeah. It's we're giving them one where they didn't have one before. Yeah. And many of the creature types here are pretty intuitive and it avoids the potential long-term cost of creature tribal. Yes. Like I play with all the portal creatures and changelings and they're all, it's a creature deck. <laughs> sure. Like who wants that? Right. Sure. So I know that I'm uh, on the record as being an anti uh, creature type errata enthusiast. Yeah. But in the case of the portal creatures, it's fringe enough and they're basically just missing it in the first place that I'm fine with it. Let's go over some of the weird terminology that's taking place in Portal. All right. So Portal also featured different terminology from what is found in a normal magic set. I've already teased interceptors. Uh, that replaced the term blocking. Deck replaced the term library. Discard pile replaced the term graveyard. Offense replaced the term power. And defense replaced the term toughness. Now, this didn't work as well as intended as when players moved to more advanced level sets where none of these terms were used. The correct ter- the correct terminology was a little bit confusing. And unsurprisingly, these cards also re- received, excuse me, an errata. Again, I think an errata is appropriate here to remove the terminology of intercepting and discard pile offense, defense, whatever. So I will ask you, person who designs games for a living, why would you use different terminology in a set like this? Well, the... The goal or ideology would be to simplify game terms that are too complicated or cumbersome. These examples are all horrendous okay. executions of this. Okay. Because they are, first of all, the goal is to teach someone the game, right? Yeah. So the minute you're putting a word in front of them that's not actually the word they use when they're playing, the burden of proof to do that is extremely high. 
Sure. Now, in all these instances, they are taking words from magic that are extremely simple, extremely evocative, and in many cases, both, and turning them into words that are equally clear and not evocative. It's awful. Library is, you know, the core conceit of the game is you're a wizard. You're casting spells. Graveyard. That's intuitive enough. That's when creatures die. Where where else would they go? They go to a graveyard. The discard pile is a a very oddly uh, neutral word. Yep. It's not evocative at all. Interceptor is a longer word than defender. <laughs> like if you're lo- if you sure. want to just like save space on the card, the word's longer. Sure. I guess you could tell. I guess you could tell me that power is insufficiently clear that it would be worth considering a change to the word there. Okay. But again, I don't think, I can't think of anything that would cross the burden of proof to of why are we teaching people words that are not part of the game? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Interceptor, I was going to say intercepting an Interceptor is the worst offender here, but I actually think that Graveyard being switched to discard pile is the for me it's the biggest defender it's really bad i really hate interceptor too because defender is a pretty besides being the word that's actually used yeah it's a pretty good evocative representation of what happens it's sort of this passive act of putting something in front to defend yourself yeah interceptor implies a much more active process that's going on with the creatures in question yep so it's not even like the tone's right yeah awful not a big fan uh portal changed the established layout of cards such that the power and toughness printed on these cards were accompanied by a sword and a shield symbol to clarify the meaning of those numbers so we've already got the change from off um, excuse me from power to offense and toughness to defense and now we have an accompanying sword imagine i'm holding a sword now now i'm holding a shield i don't hate this no this is fine this is okay totally unobtrusive yeah does not tell you anything that's wrong if this was just on magic cards now be fine you know what i mean yeah so this is i think an example of the right execution okay it's not conveying anything that's false it doesn't make the other cards that you encounter not make sense it's just a little handy reminder that, yeah, the, the first number is how much damage you deal and the second damage is your toughness. Okay. Uh, Portal also has rules text in bold to distinguish it from flavor text, and a thick line was drawn between rules text and flavor text to reinforce the distinction. So, uh, as an example, I'm going to make the card Charging Paladin appear. It's a three mana two two of charging paladin attacks. It gets plus O plus three until the end of turn. Long black line. And then a true warrior's thoughts are of victory, not death. This is another change that I think is above the board. Yeah. People do get confused about I've encountered myself italics as reminder text plus italics as flavor text. Yeah. And some of this has huge rule significance, and some of this has none. And if you interpret it as the second thing as the first thing and vice versa, you get yourself into trouble. Okay. Uh, so I think the line there separating the two and having all rules text in bold is again, maybe that's not what you want to do for your magic sets writ large, but in terms of a new player tutorialization experience, totally fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm for it. I actually, when I'm looking at these portal cards, I like the black line. Yeah. I think it's kind of nice actually. Yeah. It it's doesn't, it doesn't look bad. It's it's clear enough. Uh, no one can get confused by it. And if it offers a little bit of clarity at no expense, it's uh, to me analogous to the sword and shield and the power and toughness. It's impossible for anyone to get confused by this. And if it offers a little bit of clarity, then that's great. Okay. Now, in the beginning, many on the design team were confused about the expectations behind the portal concept, which is not a great place to be, obviously. Uh, as a joke, they named the set Harvey after the invisible rabbit in the famous play and movie made in 1944. Not famous to me. Cause, oh, it's just the nerds. Yeah, because I didn't... <laughs> nerds! Nerds. Uh, Portal, they named it Harvey because uh, Portal was big, invisible, and no one knew what it was. Nerds! Yeah, this was named after the head of R&D's favorite silent film. Yeah, pretty so, much. Come on. 
Uh, Portal was not uh, not a legal set for official tournament play, as we have mentioned a little bit here, in any organized format until October twentieth, two thousand five. Uh, which was wait for it that was uh that was during my second year of college when it and other starter level sets were made sanctioned for legacy and vintage now if memory serves i believe that this set was made legal right around grand prix philadelphia in 2005 the first legacy grand prix uh i don't know if you were there or not i was not it was when uh chris pakula mm -hmm. with dead guy ale uh, got second place in mm -hmm. the first legacy grand prix and um i'm hoping that i can get confirmation of this in some form or fashion but i'm pretty sure this i don't want to say it was made legal for this event but uh maybe around this time so there you go it makes sense you know they're they're black world cards legacy and vintage can accommodate a lot of weird stuff there's really no reason to have a right line around making them not legal in perpetuity for eternal formats yeah so yeah sure and also most of the cards are either weak or uh essentially functional reprints of cards that are already around yep there's a handful of outliers there that do change the format but it's just i don't think worth who cares right all right yeah you can play with nature's ruin now in your legacy tournament okay sure it's just not that big of a deal. I don't think it's that big of a deal either. So uh, it's nice to see these cards be legal. Uh, that's pretty cool. Wizards of the Coast, you know, the people that make the game, uh, they launched a major advertising campaign, including commercials on MTV and popular TV shows to introduce magic to a major audience. Now, we know that Wizards and their marketing team back in the day, I'm going to politely say not the best. And maybe making some concepts to make magic seem cool, perhaps. Uh, they expected some players to stick with Portal, but most to learn with uh, learn with it and then move on to standard magic. As it turned out, most people learning Portal were taught by experienced magic players, and then those players used standard rules and terms rather than the Portal ones. And those differences caused confusion for the people who learned how to play with Portal because the terminology isn't the same. Now. Uh, this will be fixed in Portal Second Age, and we're going to get there at some point this year. But yeah, this is why the details matter, as you like to say. Yeah, it's you can't you can't teach people the the rules the wrong way and give them garbage they they're not allowed to use afterwards. Yeah, and tell yourself you're teaching players how to play. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. can't do that. It's a, I appreciate in a lot of ways, hearts in the right place. You want to make something simple and get new players in the door and you're going to advertise it. So people who maybe know about magic, but aren't super familiar, they have a product to go ask about at their local store or whatever, mm -hmm. all good goals, yep. but you need to give them things that are uh, true and useful. <laughs> That'd be nice. And this is neither. That would be nice. Uh, confirmed by the way, me, me and my brain over here. Uh, as I mentioned just a minute ago, Portal was made legal October 20, 2005 for Legacy and Vintage. Grand Prix Philadelphia, November 12th and the 13th, 2005. Cooking. Bang. Chris Pakula, everybody. Second place. Lost to Ambrasier. Lost to Goblins in the finals. Did. Oh. Your boy. You got it. Your boy won. John Sade. Yeah. Jersey boy. Yeah. This was uh, uh, for a long time we've made jokes about. You know, goblins and legacy. It's the deck of gentlemen. Yeah. And then we would just rattle off people who we knew who played the deck to some success, many of whom were not gentlemen. Okay. And it's just, it was very funny for a place in time. Got it. Got it. Okay. See, now we're coming full circle, baby. All right. What else we got here? Uh, Portal was sold in uh, a few different ways. 15 card boosters, the first one to note here. Uh, one rare, three uncommons, nine commons, two basics. Portal basics are really nice, by the way. Uh, Portal boosters, they feature the following artwork. We got Archangel, we got Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, we got Elvish Ranger, and we got Spined Worm uh, for those boosties. Each Portal booster included one of 10 different strategy cards with deck building tips. Uh, there are five strategies described in all, one of each five friendly color pairs with two different versions. So uh, nowadays, like for limited sets, um, 
the, before the set comes out or around when the set comes out, I'm not entirely sure, but like basically they'll have like, hey, like uh, like blue white does this and blue green does this. And like every like most recent limited set just has like all the color pairs do something and mm-hmm. they tell you what it is. So Portal doing this is kind of cool because it's happening nowadays. So blue white, uh, they had titles. So blue white was air superiority. It's flying. Uh, <laughs> blue black was card domination. What else would I be dominating? Yeah. These are just all cards. I would agree. Uh, (laughs) Black black, red is fiery doom. uh, Yeah, they kill stuff in you. Uh, Red and green was gargantuans, and green and white was the horde. Or if you like how I say the dark, the horde. Uh, Portal demo game boosters were given away as a free product to advertise magic. Now, out of the 24 Portal cards, they contain six of them feature additional rules text and are therefore slightly different from their counterparts found in the booster packs. I'm sure our wonderful editor is going to make some cool graphics appear right now. There's armored Pegasus. There's cloud pirates. There's snapping Drake. Spoiler. That one's an award later. There's storm crow. There's feral shadow and there's bull hippo. Mm -hmm. They're slightly different, right? That's it. Those are the promo packs of the game. Giving these away. Come play some magic. We'll give you a free pack. Uh, And then Portal also had an additional product called the Portal two-player starter set. Be weird if I had that over here somewhere. I guess it would be. Oh, no. I found it. Come on, big dog. I found it. Okay. (laughs) There it is. It was under my backpack. First of all, I'm coming to my main camera here. I don't know if you can see this. Free booster pack inside. They sold me. Yeah. Even though I'm new to magic, I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a free one in here. Uh, This is a starter set for two players. Your entry. Oh, this is nice. Your entry into the dynamic game of strategy and imagination. Yeah. Better not call the deck, the library. People are going to get confused. (laughs) I want to see what's on the back of this. Now I finally get to do this. Okay, here we go. Because one thing I love as someone who does marketing I love the idea of whatever they decide to put on here. Okay. Oh, baby. Whew. Your first step into the ever-changing world of Magic the Gathering. Portal makes it easy to master the many facets of the world's original trading card game. It does not. (laughs) Object of the game. You and your opponent are rival wizards dueling for control of a magical plane. Reduce your opponent's score from 20 to zero before he or she does the same to you, exclamation point. Yeah, that's definitely uh, that word that, you know, health. Yeah. That like very clear and visceral and evocative word. Yeah. We got to get that out of here. Smell now it. it's a score. It's actually more confusing mm-hmm. and it's less compatible with other cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, contents, two 35 card pre-constructed decks, two play mats. And a guidebook, again, the guidebook and rule book. Sick. You get them all. Now, you might be wondering yourself right now, are these dudes going to play with these decks? Stay tuned. You'll find out. Uh, I've got all the notes there of this. Uh, there was also apparently, uh, besides this, there was also a gift box product that's a bigger box that packages the regular box product with additional content. One Extra portal booster pack, two scorekeeping beads. Mm-hmm. Does that mean just two? Two. Oh, I get it. Because the playmat probably has the numbers, and then you have a B that you can. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I bet that's not hard to lose. Keep track of your score. <laughs> okay. And then a checklist of all. Also, the- usually <laughs> scores count up, not down. Oh, here we it's go. It's so bad. Okay. It's probably the worst part of this product. And that's, there's a lot of competition. Uh, th- there's also a checklist of all the cards in Portal in the gift box. Just oh, there. sick! You can collect the whole set and then be told you can't play with any of it. That yeah, still probably. So what's worse, the checklist or the score part? Score is worse. Okay, score is way worse. Uh, also, one more thing to know about some weird artwork here: seven of the Portal cards included in the starter set featured additional rules text and are therefore different from their booster pack counterparts. Those seven cards are Warriors Charge, Hand of Death. Blaze, Raging Goblin, Anaconda, like the movie, Elite Cat Warrior, and Monstrous Growth. Another thing that I want you to consider okay. about the word score. Yeah. Please template for me Stream of Life. Uh, 
Target player gains X score. Target player's score is increased by X? Yeah. No. 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 Use health. Come on. Score is so bad. It's almost like you do this for a living and have for like two decades. Yeah, but some of this stuff doesn't require me to be doing this for 20 years to call out as bad. <laughs> I mean, that was a light bulb moment because I never thought of that. It's just, just like, yeah, it's you want to, uh, you know, just write that card. Yeah. Healing salve. White. Sorcery. Choose one. Okay. Uh, you may play this card whenever a creature or you was about to die. Stop the next three damage dealt to that or uh gain three score yeah because remember no instance and you know i mean that's that's one of magic's most complicated designs is healing salve (laughs) we need to make sure that our tutorial product makes that card much more clear uh me and this guy we're gonna go to uh we're gonna go to our other studio and see if we can reduce each other's score uh because we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna play with this product just like we did in our fifth edition episode right after this. All right, everybody. We're here. Other receivable studio. It's time not to crack a pack. That's a different video. It's time to crack a starter set for two players. Mm-hmm. That's me and you. Uh, your entry into the the dynamic game of strategy and imagination. Now, in the episode, I've already read the back, so I'm not gonna read that again, but it's what's inside is the prize. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move these aside because again, these are for later. Let's go ahead and put this here. Now I posted this on Twitter before we recorded this. Don't shuffle the decks before your first game. Contrary to the instructions on page four of the play guide, Play your first game with the decks facing up, Devoted Hero and Storm Pro, so both players can see which cards are being drawn. Play future games with your decks facing down. So this is terrible. Yet another thing in Portal that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do for new players. Yeah. Wandering Eye as the game rule is really bad. I barely know how my own cards work. What am I supposed to do about the information about your cards? Do mm-hmm. you have a removal spell in your hand? And I'm looking at a creature in my hand, I'm like, am I supposed to play it or not? This is just terrible. I, terrible design. So of all the things that we discussed in the facts portion of the show, things we agree with, things we don't agree with, whatever, right? I don't even know how you get here. No, this is so bad. I don't know what the conversation looks like between any person in the office design development that is like, hey, face up game one right i don't know how this could happen it really it does seem like a product that was never at any point put in front of a new player okay or players okay during the design development it's it looks like experienced magic players who don't really have much of a game design sense speculating about what's complicated or not. okay like i'm like i'm not even trying to be mean to be clear, so again, I always state this during the show, you work on games and have mm-hmm. for a very long time. What would the rationale be? Like, can you even make an argument, like a clear argument to do what this is suggesting? Uh, I'm gonna open this while you do that. I mean, I, I, the best is just, I, I guess there's the information and be, getting to learn about cards before they're played against you. Okay. But I'm really straining. Okay. It's just, first of all, part of the fun of the game is, yeah, you've got cards in hand, they're a mystery. That's fun. Stuff can happen to me. And then we play game to game and it turns out that it's different each time. Like what the contents of your hand are. Sure. That's sort of a core fun element of magic. And also the cards are pretty simple. So it's not like anyone should be surprised by what someone does. And then there's one of my favorite things, what I'm, you know, of trying to express some game design principle of because of this, therefore what? <laughs> sure. What would I do with this information? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, you've got a jungle lion <laughs> in your hand. Okay, that's good to know. No, uh, it's not. <laughs> a couple of things that we've gotten here in the packaging. Uh, there's a play guide. There's a rule book. 
And then we get these things that say play this, uh, excuse me, read this first and they're each play mat. So to start playing magic with a friend, here's what you do. You give your friend one of the decks in this box and take the other one for you to use. Don't open the decks until the play guy tells you to. Okay. Yeah, the most fun part, just looking at cards. Don't want to do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Put the rule book and booster pack to one side. Okay. You won't need those until later. Take the play guide and start reading it. Oh, excuse me. Give your friend one play mat and keep this one for you to use. Oh, this is a play mat. Yeah, that's what you I already got one out. Yeah. Okay. And then take the play guide and start reading it. It will show you how to play magic step by step. And soon enough, the two of you will be playing on your own. If you're learning the game by yourself, nerd, <laughs> you can read through the play guide and play out both sides. No, you can't. Don't do that. Put all the cards. Don't put that in this thing. Put all the cards face up and play against yourself. If you have no friends, don't worry. We've made a way for you to be able to play. Yeah. Come on. Come on. All right. Um, that's, I'm sorry. That's not okay. Uh, welcome to the many worlds of Domina. And they got a little advertisement here for Mirage, uh, for fifth edition and for Portal. Okay, so Portal, the entry, open the door to strategy and imagination. Uh, fifth edition, build your skills. After Portal, find your way to the center of the world, experience the main game, and then Mirage, endless adventure. Can you survive to the far corners of Domino? Master ultimate strategy. Okay, so they did this right. Yeah, they're suggesting their steps. Yeah, right. right. After Portal, fifth edition, and then once you have fifth edition down, Mirage. Yeah, so they did that actually pretty well. Of like starter product, core set, or like advanced expansion. Okay. Right. So I like that. Uh, we flip this over. We got creatures. Your deck goes here. Your discard pile goes here. We're definitely using this, by the way. Your life total, lands go up. Oh, you know what? Some of you out there, let's play your lands in front. Creatures in the back. Mm-mm. Yep. Mm-mm. No way. Okay, attacking versus intercepting. Creatures with summoning sickness can't attack. Attacking creatures can't choose which creatures they fight, if any. Attacking creatures can't gang up, quotes, on defenders. Attacking, yeah, okay. Right, mm -hmm. which is, uh, like, this is so bad. Keep going. An attacker might fight several defenders if they intercept it. That's speaking towards double blocking, but you don't want people to do that in this product. Creatures with summoning sickness may intercept, okay? An intercepting creature may choose which attacker it fights, if any. Intercepting creatures may, quote, gang up on an attacker, and an interceptor who fights one attacker doesn't fight any others. Okay, uh, there's a camera that's looking at you. Yeah, go ahead. This is so bad. Yeah. Okay, creatures with summoning sickness can attack. I don't mind that. I would prefer to say something like, creatures have summoning sickness. That means they can't attack the turn they're summoning. Okay. Um, because, 99% of creatures don't have haste. Okay. Or whatever the number is, but it's high. Okay. Uh, attacking creatures can't choose which creatures they fight, if any, is barely English. <laughs> and uh, suggest something about the rules, which is not true. It's not direct attacking. It's not Hearthstone. It's you attack, and then the opposing player gets the option to block. Yep. Attacking creatures can't gang up on defenders. Uh, that suggests something that's not true in multiple ways. Okay. Like it's an extension of the second thing in terms of not being true and implying things about the rules that are not correct. Okay. An attacker might fight several defenders is really confusing against the second and third bullet points. <laughs> uh, but I guess it's technically true. Okay. Creatures with something sickness may intercept. That's a great thing to put in there. Yep. That's a common source of confusion for new players. Okay. Okay. An intercepting creature may choose which attacker it fights. Sort of compl sort of again, like what that implies the rules are is I announce this as a blocker, and then there's some process by which it is assigned to a creature, not I just block creatures. Yep. Intercepting creatures may gang up on an attacker. Okay, fine. An interceptor who fights one attacker doesn't fight any others is sort of 
already captured in all the other stuff and just it's more confusion yeah. so the of the eight of these i think one of them is good creatures with something said this may intercept many of these are worse than useless they just imply things about the rules that are not true uh, I'm not going to go through the play guide because it's long, but it does say read this booklet when you're ready to learn how to play, which is seems like it's in contrast with the rule book. Mm -hmm. uh, play through, play through the play guide first. Once you see how the game works, use this book to answer specific questions you might have. So this is actually not an uncommon thing. Okay. The play guide is just here's how you get through your first game. And I'm assuming that's supposed to correspond with the play all cards face up. It's just a step-by-step -step telling you what cards to play in what order and explaining to you what happens like in as the cards interact. Okay, sure. And then the rule book is the more generalized. Here how the rules actually work. Uh, within the rule book, just so everybody knows at home, so what do you think of Portal? Mm -hmm. This is the sort of thing that would never happen today, by the way. You get to fill this like mailer in. Oh, can I do that? <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, give that to me. Okay. I'll fill this out and send it to him. Okay. Is it like there's like postage on the back or something, right? No postage necessary if mailed in the United States. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm gonna fill this out and send it over to you. I guess we're gonna see where this goes. From what source did you discover the game portal? Hmm. Television advertising. Radio advertising. Ooh. Newspaper slash magazine article, demonstration, favorite game store, advertisement in magazine, advertisement on the internet, mm -hmm. friend, family member, event, game tournament, other. A lot of options. A lot of options. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I can't imagine this field box is still active, but I'm going to send it out. We'll see what happens. Now, look, I know it might seem as though we're being a bit facetious because we are, and we're going to continue that behavior in just a moment. Uh, let's go over the decks. One of these is deck A, one of these is deck B. Uh, we're going to put deck A's deck list on the screen for you right now. Um, Devoted Hero, Regal Unicorn, Anaconda. Looks like we got ourselves a Naya strategy here, partner. Yeah, Naya beat down six yeah. planes, six pounds, three forests. Green Splash appears to be for Anaconda. Uh, Grizzly Bears. Oh, gorilla Warriors. Got gorilla me. Warrior. Maybe Lizard Warrior? That's oh, right. That could also it's be. 4-2. Oh, that's the 4-2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, sure. It's just some creatures and, um, you know, some bird spells. Fine, I guess. I don't know. Other side. Uh, deck B. Ooh, salt eye. Yeah, a little salt eye strategy here. Uh, Snapping Drake, so you probably want that deck. Mm. Yeah, I know. I'll give you that one. Uh, Feral Shadow Gravedigger, which is probably just the best card in both decks. Uh, a Rowan Tree Folk, a Mind Rot. I don't know. Looks fine enough. Yeah, Mind Rot's really fun card to put in the starter deck. <laughs> this card too, man. This, this is so this much card fun. Too. All you right. know these cards you've been like really looking forward to playing? Yeah, just pick pick the ones you like the least. <laughs> Get rid of them. Get them out of here. All right, so we're going to play. Oh my God. That puts a thing on top, right? Yeah. Ash, now. What's the most fun part of the game? The draw step. Draw the same card again. Yeah, really fun. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Through the magic of technology, uh, Patrick and I are going to make these decks in these boxes. Well, they're going to appear in sleeves and we're going to play at least one game. I can't promise you any more than that. BRB. All right, gang. Our decks are sleeved up. Um, it appears I, I, I've gathered from a uh, from our uh, from our interaction here. You're not. We're not doing this, huh? No, I'm no, not, not interested in that. I can't get him to engage. No, I want a real game. Okay. Uh, and we're not going to use our playmats because you know I'll tell you what. In theory, this is Magic's first playmat. I don't know if that's. That's probably true. So we're rich because we have the first one. Or I no? very, I very much doubt it. That also looks like a very easy thing to make your own copy. <laughs> Play mats have come a long way. Yeah, I guess because of you know reasons. You know, this is this is a half-hearted attempt. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's nowhere near the most objectionable thing in the product. Sure. Okay, let's get it ready here. High roll. How it should always be done. Oh yeah, eleven me. 10. Tough. I'm going to go first. Good luck as always. Good luck. Uh, I am on the Naya Strategery. 
I've got Sultai control. Yeah, you you have uh you got your old pal you got your old pal snapping Drake, so Oh, and uh, I, I do want to institute one rule in this game that we played. We have to use portal terminology. Okay. Which mostly means we have to use the term intercept. Yeah. I think that's the only thing that really changes. Three, seven. Let's see the same. Uh, I would, oh yeah, oh my God, you're dead. You good? Very good. Um, oh, oh, oh yeah, Rage and Goblin. Um, this card's fun. 19. Your yeah. turn. No, this is like that card's actually super fun. Yeah. We're getting the muck. Muck rats. What do we got here? One one blank. Okay. Okay. The difference between a nuisance and a threat is often merely a matter of numbers. They call me Curve Out Jones. All intercept. All right, good, good intercept, good intercept. Uh, you know who can't intercept? Hulking, oh. hulking goblin. Dude, this is like the last video. You're just giving me these details. Oh, I got something to play on the first four turns again. Stormcrow. Ah! Stormcrow descending, winter unending. <laughs> Stormcrow departing, summer is starting. <laughs> Deuce. No blocks. All right, you're at 17. Uh, we call this in Ohio, we call this the Rodman. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, Grizzly B. Okay. Your turn. Mm. Okay, yep. No Rodman here. Mm, tough. I'm gonna give you that business. All right, 19 it is. Ooh, a follow -up. I'll play a Feral Shadow, it's a 2 1 flyer. Your okay, turn. all right, you're in the air. Yeah. And I'm on the ground. Let's see what this. Oh gosh, here we go. Only. Uh huh. Okay. Play this. Bonk. I'll take four. All right, you're at 13. Yeah. And good luck. Ooh, well done. Your turn. It's nice. Very reminiscent of the last video in fifth edition where I curved out and Hill Giant was the top of the curve there. Mm. This is actually kind of a sick draw. Genius Thief. Is this look at the grip? Yeah. Let me check out your action. Okay. What well, you got for me? I got a sorcery that I can play as an instant. Only after you're attacked before you declare a new Okay. So, okay. Um, Okay, three, four, that's one block on the girl giant. Uh, it's really nice that they uh, give you this against the deck that's all the creatures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's one block. If I attack with the storm crow, then oh, that's not great. I think I'm gonna wait a turn. Go ahead. All right. All right. You're gonna play a little defense, huh? Yeah. All right. Interception. No land. No. Interesting. Yeah, my draw is awful. <laughs> Uh, play this mountain that you know about. All right, let's let's read Defiant Stand together. One in a white sorcery. Play Defiant Stand only after your attack before you declare interceptors. Right. So it's plus one plus three and attack. <clears throat> it's like surprise blocking. Okay. Which is really nice against a deck with all flying creatures. It's also really <laughs> nice in a deck with hulking goblin. <laughs> also, I was wondering if I could just play it. No. Which no, you can't do that either. You may not. Okay. So this card is like it's not even in my hand. Beat down. So let's see how bad this is for me. Mm. Oh, this, seems, this seems all right. Here I come. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, get out of here. The crow or the thief? The th oh, this is a 2-2. Right. right. Sorry, I thought that was Raging Dawn for some reason. Yeah, crow down. Okay. Yeah, crow down. I take three. Yeah, you take three. All right. I got a little more where that came from, though. Mm. The one who devoted hero, the heart's courage, is the soul's. Guardian. That's surprisingly good here. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So you took three. You're at ten. Oh, good. Uh, mm. <sighs> Risky business. I guess okay. I should do. I'm gonna cloak of feathers, my genius thief. I remember this card. Yeah. Okay. Yep, you draw a card. Oh. Nice. You hit that land? I'll take one. I'm at 18. 
Go ahead. No, nothing. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. Nice. Let's see. I don't know if your deck played for removal spells because I can't remember the deck list, but. Uh, all right. Let's get you. This game is so stupid. Never playing again. All right. This is whoever is playing screw. You are at six. Yeah. Your turn. Okay, okay. Is he back in it? I'm gonna time ebb your hell giant. I get to draw that again? Yeah, so That's, much fun. Okay. You know how much how fun it is right now for you to like imagine drawing your blaze or your volcanic hammer? Uh-huh. I wanna just take that hey, out. Hey, well you know blazer. what? This is this is you see this? Mm -hmm. This is how it wants to be played. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> 17. It's your turn. Give you those lumps. Boom! Mm -hmm. uh, you're at five. Hills up. Yep. Your turn. I'll touch your brilliance. All right, a little inspiration. Yeah. One, two. I'm only getting worse. How's that possible? You have everything. I have two cards, and they're both horrible. Go. Okay. He's unblocking, dude. We're going to force the block here, I think. All right, so this means you're gonna block this one. Yeah. All right. So. Do 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 do. Oh no! It's help. Warrior's charge. Insane. Okay. All your creatures get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Do 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 do. It's time for you to intercept. Yeah. Take two. You intercept. You just cool. leave heck by the performance though. You are at three. You know the last card in my hand. All right. Big draw step coming. Okay, that's something I'm going to want to at three. You are at three. Snapping Drake. Okay, okay. Go. Your boy. Six, four, five. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Huge draw. Huge draw. Um, I'll trade with the old giant. Alright, take one, two. I'm in the air now. No! One, two, flying? Armored Pegasus. You got your own Stormcrow? Yes, I do. Oh, it only costs two. All right. Your turn. Come on, dealer. And I still have this horrible Defiant stand in my hand, ready for you when you attack. Raven Knight. Uh, can't intercept. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure you know that. Vampiric Touch. Draining for two. Uh, deals two damage to your. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, so I'm at fifteen, and you're at four. Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> okay. Go. I thought that was like vicious hunger. No, I thought I would have played it by now. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Whoop. Uh oh. Uh. Craven Knight can't intercept. You're at two. You soul rolling me in a game of Portal? Yes, you Bonk. are. Alright, I lose. Yeah! Yes! Victory! Alright, All right. I ask you, do you dare play again or is I'll run it back. back? Okay, okay! We play until I draw a forest. Okay. <laughs> don't say we don't love you people at home. Game number two! Right after this. Game number two, coming at you. Probably should have found a hand I could keep beforehand. Keeping a little fast and loose. All right. I'm not no. Probably no. die with this one. All right. I, I can't. I can't. Uh, what's our mulligan rule? What do you think? Uh, what do you think they did? I think we should do it. I think draw seven is fine. You know, gentlemen's ribbon. And okay. we're not just looking for the nut draw. <laughs> like my last game? Yeah. Oh, tough. All right, I'm gonna go one more. Okay, one more. That was that was green cards in a forest. See, this is this is this is how the sausage gets made in the videos, folks. You're getting to see the mulligans here instead of just people keeping hands that work. This is game. Yeah, Dude, that's game. Yeah. Look at that. That's that's, that's the Rodman. Yeah. El Rodmino. Four, five, six. Oh no, not again. Uh, good enough. Go. Nudge. I keep this hand in a real game. 
So, brought him. Was <laughs> somebody call the cops? Yeah. Uh huh. Anaconda, mountain, bonk, Sunburns. axe, little giant. Okay, go ahead. All right. Pick up your hand, man. Nah, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you see it. It's your what turn. Is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's your turn, buddy. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> I'm gonna give you that business. 19. Go. Ka -ka! Oh, man. Alright. Might be hammer time. Alright, I'm gonna say go. I'm gonna save my hammer. We'll come back to this yeah. decision. Okay. Oh, no. Set aim. <laughs> you got red on you. Skeletal project. Uh, that's a 5-1? Yeah. Okay, that's dead. The less flesh there is, the more teeth there seem to be. Mm. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> Bonk. Uh, it's your turn. Yeah, really clutching that blaze, huh? You think it's gonna get better? I think it could. I think it could. Yes. <laughs> Is this the regret? Two, oh, three, yes, four, yes. four. I bet this is when I draw the four six and all the planes. Oh yeah. That's sick. Oh yeah. All right. You want to play? Let's, giant. let's play. Okay. Your turn. Oh no. Just, just that one? We don't have a forest. You would have seen it before combat. But hey, you think there's no reason? Oh, this flies. Oh, it flies? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Giddy okay. up. That card's way better than 13. Go. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. All right, here we go. Now we're cooking. Eh. We wanna, yeah, we want to do that. Smush you. Yeah. All right. Mm. You're at 17. Tell me more where that came from. Oh! Mm -hmm. Oh! Armored Pegasus, your turn. Now we got him on the ropes. And if I ever draw that forest, you lose. Grandmaster attack. Okay, I'm gonna block a uh, block there. I'm gonna take two. Yeah. That attack was insane, by the way. Okay. All right. You snuck the two in on me. Hypothetically. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just, just, that's it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this card. Okay. Uh, Everybody. Five. You're at 12. Got a lot of action plays in your hand, too. Can I familiarize you with Venerable Monk? Oh, no. Uh-huh. That'll put the home team up to 13. And while we're here, Sacred Nectar, 17. Okay, you're up. Rough turn, rough turn. Go. Cool. Yeah, we'll save that one for later. Okay. Is it for us? Nah. <laughs> All right, no good attack here. Nothing great. So if I attack with this, we got a little double. I don't mind a double block. So let's jam with this. I guess you would double block here. I would kill that. Yeah. Um, you could double block there. All right. Hills up. The hills have eyes. Get out of here. Catch. Mm hmm. You're at seven. Yeah. Go. I'll give you a touch. Okay. It's just a little touch. 15 to 9. Go. Big untap. Big draw. Oh no. It's over. I like to call it the check mark. Mm -hmm. There we go.
smell bad. <laughs> I'm at nine? You were at nine. How did I To my, uh, to my 15. Nine. Four or five. How much? You have four or five lines? Mm-hmm. I was judged earlier for holding the blaze. I want everyone to know that. Yeah, like I was beating Volcanic <laughs> out here. <laughs> Great point. <laughs> Ooh, double A. All right. Uh, crow down, and you will take three. You're at six. <laughs> oh, no. no. Man, I really <laughs> hope they put treachery in here. <laughs> I submit. Boo! Two, zero, Duke! All right, I'm all, I'm tapping out. You're tapping out again. All right, that's it. That's it. My snake, my fireball, and my hammer. And don't forget about the ax either. 2-0 for Naya over Saltai, as it should be. Those games weren't bad. They weren't terrible. They weren't bad. Uh, we are going to take a short break. When we come back, I think we're headed to the cycles of Portal right after this. All right, everybody, we are here for the cycles of Portal. Now, no mechanics this time around, even though, like, sorceries that are instants that can be played sort of as instants is sort of a new mechanic. Yeah, it's like those cards from uh, Crimson Bow with the brackets. Yeah. It's oh, a little bit of that. Cleave. Yeah, it's a little, it's kind of, oh. it's kind of like Cleave. That mechanic is so bad. It's cleave, but uh, for when the card's allowed to be played. How does that meeting go? What do you guys think about brackets? Talk to me. Sometimes they matter. Sometimes they don't. Great. Man, uh, come on. I worked on that. Oh, I, good. Awful. <laughs> Awful. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, Portal has no cycles, but it does have six mirrored pairs and six matched pairs. So let's start with our mirrored pairs. Arrogant Vampire versus Starlet Angel. These are both uncommon creatures costing three MM that fly. Their power and toughness are also mirrored. Arrogant Vampire is a four three. See, cause he's arrogant, he's a tough guy. And Starlet Vampire is a three four because white creatures generally have more defense than offense. That's not more toughness than power. But that's to me, that is great. Okay. Because you are expressing Differences in the color pie in a way that is true. Yep. In the same way that unholy strength and holy strength are mirrored pairs, plus one plus zero versus plus zero plus one, flying, you know, different powers or whatever. Okay. The cards are simple. It's causing no confusion. But if you are paying that level of attention, you pick up a little clue about what colors are good and bad at different stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. Good start. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can keep this train rolling. Charging Bandits versus Charging Paladin. These are both uncommon creatures that gain a bonus to their power or mm, to their offense or defense, respectively, when they attack. Their uh, their offense or interception ranking. Yes. Whatever. Yes. Exactly. Exactly that. What's uh, the Bandit do? I'm gonna check the. I'm checking for the Bandit right now. What color do you think Charging Bandit is? I would guess it's red or black. Okay. Probably black at this era, but maybe red. It is black. Okay, because the the sort of banditry, uh, Erg Raider kind of trope, yeah, much more heavily featured in black at this time than in red. Okay. I think if that I encountered that that name for the first time in 2024, I would assume that it's a red card. Yep. But in this era, I would assume black. So five mana three three. If it if charging bandit attacks, it gets plus two plus zero until the end of turn. Mm -hmm. Charging paladin got to be white, right? Uh, it's yeah. a paladin. It can't be anything else. Uh, three mana, two, two. If charging paladin attacks, it gets plus O plus three until the end of turn. And that's another sort of frustrating for me. Okay. Again, going over the set. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to vent like this, but again, it's why people wanna, watch the show. If you want to teach people the rules and get the game and find the fun in the game, 
part of it is avoiding onboard tricks. Okay. That's a place where players regularly mess up when they're learning, and it feels really bad and frustrating. Sure. Because you have some mana and uh, mana up and cards in your hand, and something bad happens to me. That's sort of the game we're playing. Like mm-hmm. I, you, I don't know what's in your hand, and you, sometimes bad stuff can happen to me. That experience is okay. Okay. The oh, I guess I just didn't read this, and now my creature's dead for, uh, and I would have just taken two if I had read that thing. Yeah. That's so bad, and that to me is revealing of a pretty big flaw in this product. It's not just about the rules. It's like what are the experiences that are confusing and not fun. And if they are going to come up are likely because someone just didn't read something Yeah, and attack trigger, get plus O plus three is like the top of the list. <laughs> that's, a, sure. that's not even, that's not, that would be one of the first things that I would say we're not doing. A block. Okay. Your creature's dead. dead. At least the plus two plus O first of all, anytime that you would have blocked and traded is still true. Yep. And you can at least tell yourself the story of, well, I saved myself five points. It was going to hit me harder than what was right on the card. Sure. Putting your gray ogre in front of a charging paladin is not that. Yeah. It's not a great experience. Probably. Awful. 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 Earthquake versus hurricane. Uh, these are both rare sorcery spells costing X in a color. Of course, for Hurricane, it's green. And Earthquake, it's red. Deal X damage to each creature with or without flying. Earthquake, rumble, rumble, shake, shake on the ground. Earthquake, swishy poo in the air. And also each player. Um, I think these are terrible rares <laughs> to put into a uh, portal. Okay. And along with Wrath of God and Armageddon. Okay. Uh, very common new player experience. Why are my cards hurting me? Yeah. It was interesting. Uh, a few years ago, uh, some friends of mine and I were teaching someone we worked with how to play magic. He had played a variety of games, but we all played magic and he wanted to learn. And you know what was the first card he encountered where he's uh, thought it was a typo or mistake? Necrogen Scudder. Okay, hang on. That's probably between us right now. Yeah, I can tell you the text, but if you want to look it up. Necrogen Scudder. Okay, I spelled it with T's instead of D's. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not the brightest guy in the room. Okay, three mana, three, three flying. When, Netro- when Necrogen Scudder enters the battlefield, you lose, you lose three life. Okay. Okay. Why I- would I play this? Why would yeah. I play with a card that damages me? Yeah, that makes sense. And not only is the answer to that one... It's not a typo, but if you're playing draft, that's probably one of the best three cards in any pack that you're going to open. Yeah. Separate conversation. Yep. The number of rares in uh, Portal of Earthquake, Hurricane, Wrath of God, Armageddon, um, arguably, uh, you know, it's it's fudging it a little bit, but even Thundermare. Like, it, I think there's a red card that destroys all lands and creatures for seven mana. Oh, you mean devastation? Devastation? Yeah. Uh, like, award winning devastation can, later in the show. Can you give me a card that only does good stuff to me or only does bad stuff to them? I don't want to think about it that much. And not only are these the rares, they are among the most powerful cards in the entire set. So I agree with you, but I will say this. Think about what we've covered before this. Oh, I know. They can't of help themselves. Of course they did this here. I'm surprised Negro Pones is not in here. Yeah, of course they did the symmetrical, this card kicks everyone's ass because that's what the game was about then. So when, compared to like Cruel Bargain, that to me is, I don't mind that at all because it's one random card and it's so intense that the, oh, you're signing up for a deal with the devil experience is pretty straightforward. That's what that is trying to get across. Yeah, and the artwork conveys that. Yeah, doing it all across the board on these symmetrical designs that are going to confuse new players about why would I ever want to do this. Um, really, really rough to put that much power and that much rarity there. See, I'm like really okay with Cool Bargain because that's a really black thing. Yes. Right? That's a super black effect. The picture conveys that. And... It just really, it's in your face. This is what black does from a color pie perspective. And I would argue uh, the three black mana symbols do a lot of work here. Yeah. In turn, And that is a really powerful argument for getting rid of hurricane and earthquake again, which is what does X mean? And I, I'm not playing, I'm not trying to do algebra. I just want to read about dragons and knights in a way that's fun and evocative. Sure. X? 
X in the mana cost, that's another one that I would, if I was working on something like this, I would say, we're not doing that. It doesn't make sense to people. They don't yeah. process. They're just learning how to play the game. X? Well, it's zero if it's in your hand, but if it's on the stack, then it's Yeah, yeah, if any of that awful, stuff comes awful. up. Awful, Sure, sure. Uh, let's go to Mercenary Knight versus Thundering Worm. These are both rare creatures costing two and a color that have power and toughness 4-4 and require you to discard a card when they enter the battlefield, a creature or a land, respectively. It's just super fun. Yes. Again, just another... Look, so, why are all of these cards so hostile to me? So mercenary knight which may be between us right now three mana four four uh comes into play from your hand choose to discard a summon creature i like that from your hand or destroy mercenary knight yeah why if i'm new why would i want to do that yeah but i guess it's really big but i also don't, i don't want to just throw away with my creatures it's a creature i can at least with mercenary knight i can grant that there's a story there that's not bad but it's still it's also another card that's just not weak like in comparison to the rest of the cards. Oh yeah. The game is training you that the cards that are really unappealing that damage you, those are all the best cards. Yep. Uh we got personal tutor versus Sylvan Tutor. These are both rare sorcery spells uh, costing a single color of mana. For personal tutor, it's blue. For Sylvan Tutor, it's green. That search for a card of a particular type and put it onto the top of your library. So they're giving you an idea of what tutors look like in the game. I think that's fun. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't I don't mind doing some of that. It doesn't really it's weird in this experience because there's almost no card that's worth multiple cards. Yeah. Uh and it, this is so much the the personal tutor or mystical tutor sort of experience is so oriented around if not competitive play, like high power level spiky play but also those designs are really appealing they again can demonstrate something about the color pie blue cares about spells and you know green cares about creatures whatever um and players gravitate towards them so i don't think they're the perfect design to put in but they're they're above the bar and way better than most of the other decisions here uh the last mirrored pair is reign of tears versus winter's grasp these are both uncommon sorcery spells costing one mm so rain of tears is one black black and winter's grasp is one green green that destroy a land i think it's really good they teach really early about stone rain oh i think it's awesome uh to make a bunch of very pushed double pipped stone rains in a starter product with no dual lands hard to cast. just someone's color screwed yeah <laughs> <laughs> i either can't cast my rain of tears or i can and now you can't play yeah, sure what's wrong with that i like that there is uh, in this in this product there's winter's grasp there's uh rain of tears and stone rain stone rain's stone rain, stone rain in here too stone rain's in here too so wow hope you're having fun again with how they were making the game leading up to this this is probably what this is probably the only way this product could look i i was i was going through the the spoiler getting ready for this show and it was really, uh, you know, the stuff about the words being different and the really laborious way that they wrote out instant yeah. that jumps off out of you that you can't ignore that look into this. Sure. But then there's the second level down of just why are all these negative costing and symmetrical designs all over the place? And why are they the strongest cards? You know what card I came across? And it was like finding an oasis in the desert. What? Lava axe. Okay. Because it's like, oh, that's simple. Yep. And the story's great. Sure. And it's appealing to a new player. Yeah. Five, Fantastic. Five damage? It's not even the worst gameplay either. Because once you get familiar with the game and I attack with a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2 two, two, and you're at 8 and you have a 3-3 three, three bag, it's like, oh, this is interesting. Like, yeah. do I eat your 2-2 two, two and risk the lava axe or, or whatever? Uh, and there's just not that many lava axes in here. No, no, there's not. Uh, let's go over the match pairs here a little bit. We got a couple of these Anaconda versus Bull Hippo. These are both uncommon creatures costing three and a green with a land walk ability associated with the basic lands of an enemy color. Anaconda, mm -hmm. what, what kind of walk you think that's got? I would imagine that that's walking through the swamp. That is correct. And Bull Hippo Island. You've nailed it. Absolutely horrible cards to put in a starter product again. Why can't I block your creature? Yeah, it's like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. And well, it's just you made the mistake of playing a swamp. It's not even like there's the hope of getting out from under it, right? Like you have a menace creature. I have one thing back. I can't block you. 
but hope springs eternal that maybe next turn I could. It's true. This is just what reality is. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm just going to get killed by this. Actually, no. True to life. That hippo is going to kill you. Yes. And there's nothing you can do about no, it. It's a, no, it's not like real life because this is going to be uh, slow and grueling <laughs> yeah. in a way that uh, being killed by a hippo, I assume, is not. Uh, Armageddon versus Wrath of God. These are both rare white sorceries with a CMC of four that destroy all permanents of a specific card type. See, <laughs> see, they're, they're matched pairs. Sure. I mean, I, I guess I like these more than Earthquake and Hurricane because I mean, these I'm are at least I'm, dramatic. I'm never going to be they're aspirational. You know, it's another thing I don't like about Earthquake and Hurricane. I just thought of this. Okay. You know what you should avoid in your starter product? Games ending in ties. <laughs> sure, sure. Nobody wins. Because, uh, well, it's not, first of all, there's no one wins. And second of all, if I just Earthquake us out and I'm at negative two and you're at negative five, do I win? That's up. Well, for- the word we're using is score. Score would imply that I win. Yeah. Actually, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a life total. And the way that magic works is a state-based effect that gets checked is if players are at zero or less, and then they're they're dead, and so it's a tie. Uh, funny note, <laughs> when we do these episodes, Patrick doesn't decide his score for the set until the very end. I'm getting some low number vibes. Uh, baleful stare, excuse me, baleful stare versus withering gaze. These are both uncommon sorceries, costing two and a blue, and allow their controllers to draw cards equal to the number of cards of a specific enemy color and land cards of, of a specific basic land type associated with an enemy color. Yeah, great. You love to have brain geysers in uh, in starter products. You like games coming down to decking. Let's see here. I want to take a look at uh, <laughs> take a look at Baleful Stare. Okay, two and a blue. I, I'll never forget this artwork. Sorcery, look at opponent's hand. For each mountain and red card there, you draw a card. Okay. Yeah, okay. Really fun. Yeah. And then uh, Withering Gates. Okay, so this card's either awesome or horrible. Right. Right? There's no in between. If you draw it on turn eight, your opponent, you're just like, my card doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And if you draw the early parts of the game, your card draws you like four cards. All right, moving on. This won't surprise anyone. Boiling Seas versus Flash Fires. Both are uncommon sorceries, costing three and a red, and destroy all lands <laughs> of, a, of, a specific, of a specific land type associated with the enemy color. That's really fun. Really, uh... You know, I guess, I guess, I guess the argument for some of these cards is we're going to, we're going to encourage people. You know what? Magic's more fun when you play two colors. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess. I I'm guess. I'm struggling here. It's not, these are again, not cards I put in a starter product. What happened? You killed all my lands. I didn't get to play. Yeah. Perfect. The good news is you can play again. Well, the good news is that their bull hippos turned off. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? The next <laughs> the next pair has an answer to Bull Hippo. Nature's ruined for <laughs> <laughs> these are these are really great. Versus Virtue's uh, ruined. Uh, these are both uncommon sorcerers, God. costing two and a black, and destroy all creatures of a specific enemy color. <laughs> great. Yeah, sure. Next. <laughs> Nature's Ruin kills all the green ones. They got chill in there. Yeah, no <laughs> chill, chill and choke. No chill, no <laughs> choke. And Virtue's Ruin kills, I believe, all the white creatures. And last but certainly not least, Starlight versus Renewing Dawn. These are both uncommon sorceries costing one and a white that gain life depending on the amount of enemy color associated permanents the opponent has in play. Uh, black creatures and mountains respect, uh, respectively. So let's take a look here. Starlight, Star Bright. What do you do tonight? You are uh, one in a white. For each black creature your opponent has in play, you gain three life. It's a pretty classic white effect. And then renewing dawn, you literally can't see because I'm crying from laughing. Renewing dawn, uh, for each mountain your opponent has in play, you gain two life. How do we get to these numbers? So I don't... So this is the kernel of a good idea here. Okay. These are too extreme. I'm not saying good or bad, just yeah. they, they they do a lot or nothing. The version of this you could talk me into is uh, gain two life, and if your opponent controls a mountain, gain two more. 
Yeah, very sure. simple, but now you're not in the it does all or nothing space. Sure. It still is, does whatever it says it does against your white green opponent, but if you happen to run into red, it's even sweeter. This is your counter to flash fires. Right. So red gets to destroy all your planes, and white gets to gain life if you have mountains. Mm-hmm. One of them is better than the other. Well, my score is higher than yours. That, which is the point of, the, well, the right. point of the game is to reduce the score oh. to zero. Not It's not highest score wins. Mm-hmm. It's reduce the score to zero. Anyway, uh, details. That's it for the uh, cycles, but realistically, this section is mirrored pairs and matched pairs. So, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, trivia. Everybody loves trivia, so we're going to do some of that in just a bit. All right, everybody, we are back for trivia. Now, of course, if you've watched uh, episodes of this show, this section of the show sometimes vacillates depending on what I'm able to find. Um, So this time around, I've got some fun facts. I got some functional reprints. I've got some cards that were reprinted as sorceries. I've got some notable notables and uh, potentially some corset staples that at first appeared uh, in Portal. So let's start with the seven functional reprints. Now, uh, what do we consider a functional reprint? Do you have a, is that a, is that a, is that like a known term? Um, yeah, I mean, people can kind of, they fudge it a little bit with how, you know, narrow they want to call it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of a lot of people mean it's literally the same thing, even down to things like creature type. And in some cases, people have a little bit more leniency on what the definition means. All right. It's basically the same card. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have the ability to bring up the, the card we're talking about and also the functional reprint. So as an example, Beasting, three and a green sorcery. Beasting deals two damage to target creature or player. It's a functional reprint of Yanaro Beasting, same CAD uh, from Mirage. Really terrible to put in a starter product. Uh, expresses something that is really fundamentally incorrect about the color pie. Yeah, green doesn't do this. Right. Yeah. You should just be picking. You want to make, you know, a black drain that targets players and it's not very good compared to the red cards. That's totally fine. That's the thing that black does. And you actually express something about the color pie by showing, yeah, red does better versions of this. Yeah. Giving things that are really off message like beasting is a mistake, even if it's very simple. Well, let's move on to border guard. Uh, that's two and a white. It's a one for uh, no text. Um, people in the day used to call it the old horn turtle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then its counterpart is Femoref Scouts from Mirage. So two and a white, one fours with stories to tell. Fine. That's yeah. fine. That's yep. inoffensive. It's what white does. They're about the, uh, not toughness, defense. Cruel Bargain, uh, BBB. We've already talked about this in the show a little bit. Sorcery, draw four cards. You lose half your life, round it up. The uh the functional reprint of this is Infernal Contract from Mirage. Mm-hmm. Very black effect. Yes. So I'm like cool with this being in the set. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Yeah. And again, uh, the artwork does a lot of work here. And as you mentioned, the black mana symbols do too. Lizard Warrior. I remember owning this card from Portal. It is a uh, four mana, four two, uh, no other text. And its counterpart is Viashina Warrior. Uh which is from Mirage. This is pretty simple. Red creatures are, they have more offense than defense generally. Cool. Right? Yeah, I really like, this is something that I do like. You put the uh, the one four for three in white next to the four two for again in red. They both have no text whatsoever. Yeah. But again, you're expressing something about the color pie. Uh, pillaging Horde, that's two RR five five. When Pillaging Horde, comes into play from your hand discard a card at random from your hand or destroy pillaging horde uh you know the counterpart to that so it's baltuvian horde it's another like i get maybe if this is one of one of one it's just like yeah there's one oversatted drawback creature and a lot of the other rares are just big dragons or otherwise appealing that would be fine yeah but in the just sea of cards that are so similar to this and Part of what got Balduvian Horde over was the Zuzam comp, which a new player is not going to have. Yep. So another, like I said, it's not the it's not the worst sin in here, but it's more 
you know, stacking sins on top of each other, I guess. Uh, let's go to Raging Minotaur. It's 2RR, so it's a 4-mana 3-3 three, three, uh, that is unaffected by summoning sickness. Nowadays, we call that haste. The functional reprint of this is Talrum Minotaur from Mirage. Awesome. Okay, I, I like this one a lot. Awesome. Great yeah. card to put in there. And then last is Willow Dryad, which is a green for a 1-1 one, one Forest Walker, and its functional reprint is Shan... How do you say this one? Shannadin Dryads? I've always heard Shannadin Dryads. Yeah, sure. But... We'll go with that. Uh, that one's from 5th edition, which, I mean, I don't really like Land Walk. Uh, if you're going to do it, I like doing it on a 1-1 one, one for 1. I would agree with that. Very innocent, and it's, you know, the story's really good. Here's a woodland creature that's doing something mischievous. Yes. I, I can get on board with that really easily, and it's really hard to feel cheated by a 1-1 one, one Forest Walker, in a way that doesn't scale once we're talking about two, three, two, two, three, three, four, four, et cetera. Okay. So those are the seven functional reprints. Now let's uh let's talk about since there are no instants in portal, uh some cards were reprinted as sorceries instead. So as an example, uh Boil, which is from Tempest. We haven't gotten there yet, but soon. Uh that one uh, has a sorcery speed version of it in this set called Boiling Seas. Okay. Uh Fire Tempest is a sorcery version of Inferno. I want to take a look at Fire Tempest real quick. I'm sure it's on the screen here. Fire Tempest is 5RR, deals 6 damage to each creature and player. Why do my spells hurt me? Well, uh, it's, 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 because they all do. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fire, really. <laughs> uh, Last Chance is a sorcery version of uh, Final Fortune from Mirage. Mobilize is a sorcery version of Vitalize from Weatherlight. Uh, okay. And the reason I have a note here, past Cedric wrote a note here that said that these products were released at the same time. So hang on. Weatherlight, uh, first booster box my dad ever bought me, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm pretty excited to cover that. Uh, Weatherlight was released in early June, where this set was released around uh, early May. So within like the same area. Uh, Sylvan Tutor is a sor sorcery version of Worldly Tutor uh, from Mirage. Temporary Truce. Now, that's got to be a white card. Let's see if I can find this one real quick. Temporary Truce, one in a white. Each player may draw up to two cards. For each card less than two, any player draws. That player gains two life. Okay. Uh, that, is a, uh, that is a sorcery speed version of the card Truce from 5th edition. Touch of Brilliance is a sorcery version of Inspiration from Visions, which is, of course, is four mana draw two. And then Warrior's Charge is a sorcery version of Warrior's Honor. And Warrior's Charge is simply two and a white. All your creatures get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Do you have any thoughts on these functional, not functional reprints, but just sorcery speed reprints? It's not the worst collection in a lot of respects because Final Fortune and Inferno are probably cards that are more appropriate at sorcery speed anyway. Okay. I mean, whatever. If you're gonna do this, I guess that's this is part of it, right? <laughs> Just finding things that are simple, and you, if you're assuming this is not tournament legal, then you aren't even beholden to the copies five through eight issue that can emerge with a lot of this stuff. Sure. So yeah, sure. I guess it's fine. I guess I my preference would be if you're gonna go down this road to make them slightly different. Okay. Such that the person who eventually gets the instant speed copy of their portal card doesn't feel like oh this was this is all garbage i received yeah it doesn't take much to make it you know even if the instant version is much better you don't have to do strictly better but pretty low on the list of things to criticize here uh all right we got a couple of notable cards i see you in the youtube comments you guys wishing that we could go over cards that are more notable well here's the thing here's the thing some cards are more notable than others one but two depending on who you talk to Everyone's got a memory of a different card. Of course. You know, so we're doing the best we can here. Now, uh, here's what I'll tell you. Wood Elves. Woody McElf. One of my favorites of all time. First showed up in Portal and reads differently than all the other versions of Wood Elf. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Wood Elves from Portal. I don't know if you knew this or not. But it reads, two and a green, one, one. When Wood Elves comes into play from your hand, search your deck for a forest and put that card into play. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Every other version of Wood Elves is just when it comes into play. Search yep. your library for a forest card. That's a little weird to me. Is there any reanimation in the portal file? Like, what was the... 
Uh, How else can a card be played? That's a good question. I guess you can't natural order for it. That's a really weak natural order. <laughs> All right, for just forget is it. Is what I would say to that. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to move right over that. Uh, personal tutor, which we've talked about already a little bit. Sorcery speed, mystic tutor, mm-hmm. or mystical tutor, excuse me. Preemptively restricted when portal was made legal and vintage due to the power of tutor effects in the format. Uh, this did not happen to cruel tutor or sylvan tutor, but, you know, blue is better than black and green. So uh, preemptively banning that card. Probably for the best. Or or restricting. Or yeah, restricting. Yeah, yeah so I mean, come copy. on. Yeah. Like it we really want to see if we can balance around four copies of personal tutor. This is play with a different card. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know uh Jungle Lion apparently was one of the stronger cards in Portal because uh back in the day, don't know if y'all new folks, I think we call you Zoomers knew this, but uh Wizards of the Coast didn't print a lot of two ones for one. No. Yeah, that was a big uh, that was a big deal. Whenever you got one of those back in the day, now they just print whatever they want, including two twos for one. But yeah, and I think Jungle Portal, uh, Jungle Line. I don't think it could block. Yeah, it's two uh, one can't block. Sorry, intercept. Thank you. Couldn't intercept. Uh, and then I didn't know this, but I thought this was a fun fact. Eben Dra- uh, Eben Dragon, Eben. I'm gonna go with Eben. Not uh, not a good card per se. But its art has made it one of the most popular and valuable cards in Portal. I looked up the price, and it's like 12 bucks. Okay. That's it. Does, I don't think it sees playing anything meaningful. Spare me your comments, Commander people, that it's in your Commander deck. I don't care. All right. That's my notables. Uh, there's a couple of random, like, sets, uh, core set staples that first appeared in Portal, like Blaze and Lava Axe and Raging Goblin and Snap and Drake and Volcanic Hammer. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, those are the notable notables and uh, some interesting kind of trivia as far as functional reprints are concerned. Yep. So there you go. Cool. Trivia all done. Uh, We're heading to the award show right after this. All right, everybody. It is now time for your favorite part of the show, our favorite part of the show. It's everybody's favorite part of the show. It's the award show for Portal. And we will begin as we always do with the Oko Thief of Crowns Award for the best card in the set. Patrick, your selection. So I'm trying to bias my awards mm-hmm. as much as possible away from reprints. Okay. So I, you know, I, I know that there are other cards in the set that are more powerful than my selection, but in cur- in terms of something unique to Portal, I'll give it to Virtue's Ruin. Uh, that's kill all the white creatures? Yeah. Yeah, they're all dead. Only my favorite color of magic. Thanks a lot. My answer, because I'm a I'm a competitive jerk or spikopath, as Patrick would say, is Summer's Bloom. Great choice. Banned in modern. Was reprinted, I think, in I think it was seventh edition. Uh very good in Amulet Titan. So yeah. Very likely this would have been my answer were it not a reprint. Okay. Okay. Uh we move on to the Carnival of Souls Award for worst card in the set. Uh, your selection so again i'm grading on the curve of let's imagine we're playing games of portal yeah i'm giving it to beasting the creatures are so bad it's like there's no reason to spend four mana to kill any of the small ones okay it's not really effective at burning people out i think that if you played you know just games of portal decks against each other that beasting would would stick out as being especially useless Uh, my selection is thing from the deep Six blue, 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 nine, nine. If Thing from the Deep attacks, destroy one of your islands or destroy Thing from the Deep. <laughs> Why don't any of my cards help me? I worked <laughs> I worked so hard to get to this, and now it's trying to kill both me and my opponent. Yeah. I will say the artwork is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. As far as a, hey, I'm new to magic. What the hell is this thing? Uh, it passes that test. Doomblade Award for the best non-rare in the set. Uh, Spikopath here. Personal tutor. Can't be wrong. It was preemptively restricted in vintage. So definitely wins that award. Spirit of the Award again. I'll give it to Jungle Line. It's a card that would have shown up with some frequency. Uh, were it allowed in standard at the time. And in fact, many, I would argue, weaker versions of this card were printed in Urza Saga. And they showed up in competitive play. So okay. I think Jungle Line would have had a home. Yeah, personal tutor, by the way, if it wasn't clear, uh, uncommon, not rare. Feels like a rare. 
Uh, let's move on to our next award here. We're going to go to the Aboro Palace in the Clouds Award for fun of one of in the set. Do you remember your answer? Cruel Bargain. Yeah. It's a really fun design in a lot of respects, too. Something I like about it is there's this tension that makes that really conveys the deal with the devil sort of experience okay which is the sooner that i do this the more damage that i take but the more time i probably have to deploy whatever the cards are the longer i wait uh the less life i'm paying to do the thing if you're attacking me yep but i'm butting against the risk of well i might not get to untap because i'm kicking it back to you and i've gone from six to three so sweet one of card and i think not only is the text box evocative but in experience it 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 does the right thing too uh for me i'm going to go with boiling seas because it was a burning wish target and because i'm a competitive asshole that's nice thank you kill all your islands via my wish mystic confluence award for best vintage cube card in the set we both have the same answer it is natural order uh a a legacy staple in elves yeah yeah yeah, uh, and a and a really good cube card too. If you're drafting green, and if you are drafting green, I'm sorry, your deck sucks. Uh, Smothering Tide Award for best commander card in the set. You can go first on this one. I went with Wrath of God. Okay. We're really straining to come up with cards in here because it's just all reprints or cards that very explicitly don't work in a multiplayer setting. Mm -hmm. But um, Wrath of God is still, you know, sort of a core essence of what the commander experience is. Uh, I went with Woody McElf. That's Wood Elves. Uh, EDH Rec told me that it sees a lot of play, which makes a lot of sense. I think every green deck will probably have one, especially because you can search for dual lands, triomes, I know. and so now boring. the surveil lands. Yeah, it better be in your green deck. Okay. Uh, Pack Rat Award for best limited card in the set. So I went with Wrath of God because I want to kill all these stink bombs. You... You went a different way entirely. Snapping Drake. Yeah. There's no chance anyone can beat this thing. Are you kidding me? Just four mana, three, two, beast thing. It's it's like Z it's like legitimately above rate and it has evasion. It's true. If I if we got to start a draft and you took Wrath of God and I took Snapping Drake, I I would guess that I'm favored. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's bold claim. Bold claim, but all right. You know, there's also a there's also like a vicious hunger in this set. Sure, yeah, it's about super. That? Yeah, it's just not. Snap and Drake's just right. so busted. All right, all right. You're going to be you. Uh, Char Rumbler Award for the weirdest card in the set. Do you remember your answer? I remember the text box, but I don't. Uh, your answer was Nature's Cloak? Yeah, this one's very bizarre uh, because Green's style of doing this, you know, is the overrun Trump the Domains. It's not you can't block. Is that I'm so big and burly that you can't block. That's not a way of stopping this. Now, do we in the shadows? And this is an especially weird design because it's just all or nothing. Yeah. It's either this literally does nothing or it is full unblockable. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Off message plays really badly. Very weird design to have here. Uh, my selection was devastation. Uh, five RR blow up all the things. It's, uh, I mean, why is this here? Yeah, there's just so. It's the not even of, like it's, it's sort of what red does. It's weird to have this and in and in and fire tempest, the inferno reprint. Oh, you think it's weird to do that and that and earthquake? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. <laughs> and there's also a okay, so we've cut enchantments out here, we don't have artifacts either, right? Y yeah. So the fun part of the symmetrical experience is the, oh, well, Armageddon says all lands, but I can play with artifact mana. Okay. Wrath of God says, destroy all creatures. What if I don't play with any? Okay. Like you get to, you. It, it's really introductory nuts and bolts. Think about building a deck. Once you're in the world of, yeah, every permanent's gone. It's much harder to imagine, well, what would I even do to build around this? Mm -hmm. And then also, it's like, we've played this game of Portal. This is probably not that much fun. And we're just starting over on yeah. turn seven? Let's do it again. There's nothing in play. Do you think the port the people playing Portal weren't like Playland 10, Devastation Float 3? 
play a gray ogre? You don't think you don't think they? Need I think that it's one? it's more likely it was eight mana devastation fluff one raging goblin. Mm, okay, just go to town. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, they probably weren't building their deck that way. Uh, let's see a couple more <laughs> awards here. Uh, we have the blank award for best card name in the set. Do you remember your answer? Mm, I think I went with Wrath of God here again. Uh, you did not. You went with Reign of Tears. Reign of Tears. That's right. Apologies. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, my answer was uh, was Last Chance because I don't know if Last Chance is a better name than Final Fortune. I think they're both very good because they're very good at conveying exactly what's going on with the card. And that's a great example of, you know, that's another drawback card that I think is really great. Yeah. The name suggests that something extreme is going on. Yes. And the effect is so transparently absurd yeah. that, yeah, I get why what the deal is I'm making here. The artwork also does yeah. a lot of work. Another turn, like I get to go again? Mm -hmm. That's the craziest thing that a new player can hear. Yeah. So the idea is like, yeah, you, you have to mean it. That there's a risk involved. Um, that's that's great. Like, and So it's not just all the drawback stuff. The things like the cruel bargains and the, the last chances of the world, those are actually sweet to do in small doses. I want to speak to Arena Tears really quick, besides like the art being great. Okay. I love it alongside Stone Rain and Winter's Grass because both of those two cards convey it's a natural disaster of some sort. And Rain of Tears is very abstract, but the text box is the same. So I think in terms of expanding the tonal range of, yeah, destroying lands isn't just about natural disasters, but like human trauma can represent the destroying of lands. I think that's really cool. Uh, in case you weren't aware, this set also has Rain of Salt. Oh, I know Rain of Salt. Yeah, that one blow up two lands. Yeah, so a, I have a Rain of Salt story, but we might want to kick it down the road. We'll save it. Yeah. We'll save it. it. This set also has Lava Flow. What's that? Destroy a creature or a land. Okay. For five mana. So it's Fissure, basically. How many of the red cards destroy a creature yep. or a land or all creatures and lands? So you're... You, <laughs> I was kind of looking at this a little bit. So we got Volcanic Hammer, kind of. Cool, does great, it. great design. Stone Rain. Really bad. Uh, Splitting Earth. I think that's fine design. Deals to any one creature damage equal to the number of mountains you have. Sure. Uh, Scorching Spear deals one to a creature or a player. Rain Assault, blow up two lands. Mm -hmm. uh, Pyroclasm deals two. Um, we got Lava Flow. We got Stone Rain. It's just a lot of these cards are doing that. Flash Fires. Uh, Fire Tempest killing everything. Earthquake kills everything. Devastation kills everything. And Boiling Seas blows up all the islands. Fantastic. Ooh, that's red in a nutshell. Uh, let's finalize this one here with the John Avon Award for the best land artwork in the set. Uh, I went with Swamp number 206, which will be on the screen here for you fine folks. It's pretty, it's nice, and that's why I selected it. Patrick? I believe Forest 1 of the array. Yeah, it's number two, card number 212 in the set. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, beautiful and evocative, and I do want to call out the basic land artwork in the set. is It's really good. Really good, and it's a staple of the portal set, so the basic land art is really good. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot of criticism here, I think, warranted, but the, the art and style of the basics, I think, is excellent. So the awards have been doled out, everybody, which means we've got one thing left to do. All right, everybody. Now, normally this is where we would grade the set. But as you saw on the beautiful graphic, this part of the show is now sponsored by Coalesce Apparel and Design, the number one store for Magic the Gathering inspired apparel. It is run by yours truly, and it is now sponsoring the show. So you may have noticed the Merit Lage shirt and Merit Lage hat that I'm wearing. Uh, you can go over to coalesceapparel.shop or follow us on Twitter, coalesceAD, and uh, browse the wares. See if there is a shirt or hoodie, sticker or playmat uh, or hat that suits your fancy. And when you are checking out, if you use gift code resleevables, you'll get 10% off of your order. So, uh, Coalesce Apparel and Design, nobody made what we wanted, so we made it ourselves. Patrick, what card won the set and why? Uh, I'll give it to Wrath of God. Kaboom. It is 
evocative, splashy, aspirational, and a card that introduces players to sort of the concept of, yeah, it's symmetrical, but maybe there's a way for me to take advantage of this. And even when you're talking about a portal structure where you can't play artifacts and enchantments to enable it, you can sort of sandbag and slow roll. In some ways, it's nice that the how do you take advantage of it manifests from the tactics of the game yeah. and sandbagging your creatures or gaining life or whatever, okay. rather than the, yeah, I'm playing with no creatures, and so this is always a free roll. Uh, my selection is the aforementioned Ebon Dragon. Uh, and the reason I feel this way is because it's big, it's a dragon, and it's the kind of thing that appeals to new players. Mm-hmm. It's just like, look at this cool big thing. Uh, you know, we've gone on at length about the stuff that's in the set that probably shouldn't be. Uh, I think and wish that there were just more big, dumb idiots that look cool. There's just not a ton of those. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, like, why does... Now, what, Shivan Dragon, is, is that from Alpha, Beta? Yes. Yeah, okay. Sometimes I forget these things. Like, how is Shivan Dragon just not in here? I'm assuming that once you're in the world of we don't want to do instance, okay, you're also not doing tap, uh, activate doing me to do reading. this. Okay, you're All not right. doing instant speed. Okay, uh, there's a lot of second and third order consequences that probably fall out of yeah, no instance. Okay, that's fine. I just think there should be more big dummies. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and that, like dragons is what magic is kind of about. Right. It's like so. where is where is why aren't there more air elementals? Yeah. Simple, straightforward, appealing. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a great call out. Yeah, that's all. So I picked Big Dragon. Uh, and so that's what card won the set for me. Now the big question is, is uh the grade for the set. I'm gonna go first, since Patrick does his just on the fly. Uh I'm gonna give this set a three. I again, I don't think we're in one territory. I don't think we're in Chronicles range here. I don't think we're in fifth edition range which is a really bad core set because i think that there were at least a few things that were kind of done well here like for example the cards look pretty nice i like how the cards look i like the black line i like the card font being in uh in bold i think that's pretty cool i think using the new terminology is is horrific i think not having just more big dumb creatures in the set is horrible uh, i think that magic the fact that it was based around stuff like armageddon oh my you know i just thought of this right now and these cards definitely can't be in here, but I'm surprised that circle protections aren't in here. No instance, no activated abilities. Yeah, 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 and no, I know. Thank like, goodness. Yeah, One good part of this. Yeah, like I was just like, I can't <laughs> believe they're not in here because it was so core to how they designed magic. But if you're going to do the no instance, the no enchantments thing, then it can't be in here. Uh, so I'm really glad that they're not in here. But like, there's just a lot of stuff that uh, I guess what I would say is it's hard for me to believe that playing portal on portal is fun. Like if this is your intro product and someone plays, this has never played before. And then two people are like, oh, you know what? I heard about magic. All my friends are playing magic. I don't know how to play, but they made a product for us and they play this. And it's just like, what happened? I don't know. I played Nile and I couldn't kill my opponent's bull hippo and I died. And so every game that I play against my opponent, I really hope they don't draw their bull hippo that I can't kill. That stinks. That stinks. So, yeah, I'm not a I really like how the set looks aesthetically. I think the cards look really, really nice and it's not all zeros as far as the cards are concerned, like what they actually do. But if this is your intro to magic, I am curious how many people converted from playing this. I'm going to give Portal a two. Okay, there is one really good thing going on here that I want to call out and magic took the ball and ran with it as far as this change goes okay the basic lands just having the mana symbol in the in the middle okay okay why is in my opinion there's a lot of really great things going on over here which is the basic lands are so fundamental to magic arguably the most fundamental game pieces whatsoever oh for sure that we have to accept people need to understand how these work To be able to play the game. Yeah. If they're going to walk away from a tutorial experience with any information, it's got to be this. Okay. The act of playing your cards. The old, you know, third edition, fourth edition, you know, the the laborious writing out, tap to add green mana to your mana pool experience. Yep. It doesn't look, it's not visually appealing, 
and it's not really communicating anything because it's very jargony up front. And then once you once once you learn how the lands work, you know how they work. You don't need to read it anymore. Okay. So what is a way of us streamlining the text on the cards, making the individual pieces less intimidating because there's less jargony text on it, and also making them look cooler? Yeah. They, there you go. They nailed it. That is like an awesome step forward in, for Magic in general, and specifically for this style of product. Okay. And that, that yep. is what prevents this from being a one. I okay. want to call that out as being awesome. Okay. What's bad about it? Okay. Well, we don't know if people can even get the product if they're new. And then also the execution of the, how are we simplifying this experience? Doesn't really simplify in the aggregate. And if anything makes it more complicated in the total sum of someone's player arc. And then also all the individual cards are nearly all of them are miserable. Uh, way too rulesy on the edges, like games ending in draws for no reason. X is on cards, uh, seven different obliterates in red. Like we, we could come up with a streamlined experience that has a little bit of that. If you want to demonstrate the range or you want to express something about the color pie, it doesn't have to be all over the place. And I think your point of just where are the, where are the dragons? Where yeah. are the elementals? Like this, this file is really spiky for what it is. There's like a lot of really good, like cards that see, there's cards that you play, play legacy. And, and if, you're gonna, if you're going to, you know, you're going to go through the keyword thing. Can we pick stuff that plays well and is, is fun? Like the amount of land walking versus not doing lifelink is crazy to me. Yeah. Because lifelink plays better and it's more fun. Yeah. And more evocative. Yep. And so there's all these calls here on the margins that just don't make sense to me. Even if you assume the first two things are okay. And I don't think the first two things are okay either. So that's a two from me. But I do want to call out the basic lands as that is that is the heart being in the right place and the execution being awesome. I just wish more of the set had that going on. All right, everybody. So we've given Portal our scores, which means we need to update our scoreboard. And you can find all of the sets that we reviewed up to this point most recently, fifth edition uh, with a two and a one. And now Portal's going to slide in. I give it a three and Patrick gives it a two. So uh, still leading the pack is Alpha Beta Unlimited. Two tens from mm -hmm. both of us. I can't wait to give up my next 10. I have a feeling it's probably it's probably coming sooner than I think. I know mine. Ooh, okay. No spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. Yeah, okay. Going to be a while. All right. Okay. Uh, let's do some sponsorship call, uh, call outs, shall we? And, uh, ways you can connect with us or uh, you could hashtag join the conversation. Uh, first of all, you can subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash receivables, which is where you're probably watching this video right now. Uh, you can find our most recent episodes of the receivables, like when we covered fifth edition before this, uh, and look forward to our next episode of the receivables, which will be weather light. Uh, you can find our most recent episode of the receivables tournament edition, where Patrick and I covered pro tour, New York, 1996, the first Pro Tour for Magic the Gathering, Pro Tour a speed dial, as it is known by some, uh, where we play the finals and we go over who the top eight players were and all that jazz. Uh, you can find uh, snippets of our Unsleeved podcast, a podcast that Patrick and I record every single week where we talk about all sorts of stuff, sports, magic, life, and then we take in uh, a bunch of reader questions as they're sent in via email at thereceivables at gmail.com. Uh, you can also watch our crack a pack videos where whenever we cover a set like this one here in Portal, we take these packs that we bought. I'm thinking I'm sitting on mine and uh, we crack one of them and take a little trip down memory road. And then somebody uh, somebody gets that one. Well, not just that one, mm -hmm. but the other one as well. Oh, is there, this oh, is yeah, going to be yeah. one of the magical two packs. Oh, that's away. right. Because we get an extra one. Because right. we got an extra one in that in that starter product. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, make sure to join at the 10 or $25 tiers. You're automatically joined. You don't need to sign anything or announce that you'd like to be under the raffle. If you're in that Patreon tier, then you're good to go. Speaking of Patreon, you can join our Patreon over at patreon.com slash uh, We'll get early access to basically all the content that we make. Early access to the Receivables, the Receivables Tournament Edition. You'll get early access to the crack -a pack videos that Patrick mentioned as well. And the ability to win a pack if you're at the 10 and $25 tier. And you'll get complete access to the Unsleeved podcast because on YouTube, you only get little snippets. We give you a little taste over there. 
on Patreon, because it is a Patreon exclusive podcast, you get the whole shebang every single week that we record one. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter or X, depending on what you like to call it, it's at the Receivables. And then uh, our two sponsors, one, Coalesce Apparel and Design. They use promo code Receivables at checkout for 10% off your order. And then Tales of Adventure uh, Eternal. I don't think it lives. The, I don't no. think it lives in this. No, Eternal lives here, meaning there, mm-hmm. meaning here. My binder, which is true. flush with that's true, all the goodies from Tales of Adventure. Yeah, uh, use promo code Receivables at checkout with them for eight percent off of your order. So, what's next? Well, on the Receivables Normal Edition, which is like this show, as I mentioned, Weatherlight that'll be coming up next. Uh, what we got here? We got one in here. There yeah, we is. do. Steel Golem, baby. Good call. Boom. Steel Golem. We'll be doing a crack it back for that, of course, and going over that set. For the Receivables Tournament Edition, uh, you'll be able to find Pro Tour Los Angeles 1996, uh, a Pro Tour that was won by Sean Hammer Regner. Regner is, Regner what, I is heard. what we believe it is. Yeah, it's a limited Pro Tour, the first limited pro tour so we'll be uh diving into that and playing some limited matches of magic with some really bad old cards uh anything else for you partner no that'll do it okay well everybody uh he's patrick sullivan i'm cedric phillips you just learned a ton about portal we'll see you next time for weatherlight